if you want to search for something on GitHub, normally you have to go to the GitHub website, and nobody really wants to do that because your entire Git workflow is centered around a terminal. Not just working with Git itself, even working with GitHub because there is an official GitHub CLI utility. And there's even a GitHub search API, so why isn't the search API integrated easily into the GitHub CLI. Luckily, there is a way to address that with GHS, a search plugin for the GitHub CLI, which adds an interactive search prompt. So the basic usage is pretty straightforward. We go and type GH, the GitHub CLI, then the S sub command, the plugin we're looking at today, and then pass in the name of the repo. Now, this is just the name of the repo and not the author. That comes a little bit later. And when you search for that, it's going to give you this big list of results of things that might match. And in my case, I want the Ranger file manager, but let's say I didn't know exactly which repo it was. So it gives you some information to help you find it. Firstly, we have the GitHub slug, the author name and the repo name. Also, we have the description uploaded alongside the GitHub. So in this case, a Vim inspired file manager for the console, which is probably the one we want, but maybe it's not, in which case we can go and cycle through the list by using the up and down arrow keys, or we can go and page by using the right and left keys. Now, you don't have to use the right and left keys to go to the next section. We can just scroll down to the bottom of the list and it will keep scrolling. Now, if you don't like using the arrow keys and instead prefer using H, J, K, and L, those are set up out of the box and will work exactly the same way. You can also toggle a search by pressing the slash key. Now, one limiting thing about the search is it only searches based on the GitHub slug. So if I try to search for something like VIM all in capitals, that's not going to work. But if I instead search for something like, I don't know, Apache, that is going to show up in the result. I would like to see the search search based on all of the information we can see here, but having a search all together is certainly a nice feature. But anyway, once you've found the thing you want to search for, if you go and press enter, it will dump the URL onto your terminal. Now that might seem weird for a search utility, but the reason why it does this rather than opening your browser is because the GitHub CLI already has a method to do this. So rather than doubling up on functionality for no reason whatsoever, we can make use of pipes. So we can go and search for Ranger, pass that into xargs-n1, which basically is going to take the argument and then stick it on the end of the following command, in this case being a gh browse-r, and dash r takes in a repo name or a URL and opens it up in your browser. So if we go and try that now, give it a second to load the list, find a ranger, press enter on that, and there we go, opened in my browser. And there are countless other ways to build up the exact same functionality if you don't want to use GH Browse. Or you could just go and take the link and stick it in your browser. But I'll show you some other cool combinations you can make in just a bit. Before that, let's see what else GHS can do. Now, when you search, you always have to include the name of the repo, with the exception of one of the options, that being the dash capital E option, where the search is going to be done entirely based on the filtering options. Now, when I say the name of the repo, it doesn't have to be the full name. So if I want to search for something like Ranger, for example, if I just type in Rang, Ranger is going to be one of the options we see. But obviously using the full name is going to give you far less results to filter through. Now, one of the options we have available is the dash D option. This will let you search for keywords in the description. One of those words was file manager, and this is going to give us far, far less results. In this case, basically all we get is Ranger forks, some Ranger configuration, and some other things which are probably related to the Ranger file manager as well. And the other options we have are all pretty straightforward as well. We have the dash L option to filter by the language the project is in. In this case, that is Python. We can also filter by the user who created the project, which easily enough is Ranger in this case. And we can filter by the topics the project is listed in. And topics are basically repo tags. If you go to the GitHub website, we notice things like Ranger have Vim, console, file manager, file launcher, file preview. All of these are the topics the repo is in. So if we go and add Vim to that one, that should only show this single application. So dash T and then Vim. And if we pass in the dash E option as well, get rid of the rang here, 
it's just going to search based on the filter options we have here. Even so, though, we have this single result. And I don't know if this is possible within the GitHub API, but considering you can search by topics and also languages, I would like to see that information being shown in this overview here. If you can filter by it, why isn't it also here as well? Earlier on, I mentioned there are some of the cool combinations we can make. One of those being this right here. I'm not going to write it out because I'm probably going to make a mistake. So searching for a repo and then opening up its readme. So let's go and search for something here and we should be able to find, let's say, NeoVim by Rosepine here and then open up the readme inside of your terminal. This opens it up in whatever reader you have set for GitHub CLI. But maybe you want to find the issues you've created for some random repo out there. So one thing you can do is this right here. So let's go and select proxy talk. And as we can see, I've created one issue for this repo. So basically what's happening here is we are selecting the repo, passing this into GH issue list. GH issue list is how you list out the issues. The dash S option says list out all of the issues. We can go and set this to something like open or closed instead, but I want all of them. The dash capital A is the author of the issue and then dash R is the repo to go and use. Something else you could do is installing GitHub CLI extensions. So you install extensions with a GH extension install and then put the URL on the end. So if we go and search for things that have the topic of a GH extension and then pass that URL in, it seems like a pretty convenient way to install some random extensions. Now, do keep in mind that this is probably not the safest method to install the extensions. I would recommend checking the repo first and then doing it, if only just to make sure it does the thing you want it to do. And I'm sure there are plenty of other use cases you can come up with for an extension like this. Now, this developer also manages another extension, that being GHI, which is basically the same idea of an interactive search prompt, but instead of using it for the search, it's being done for issues. Now, this plugin I find to be considerably less useful. It's still useful in its own way, but less useful because messing with issues is already something built into the GitHub CLI. The only change here is now it's being made interactive. And if you prefer an interactive input method, maybe this extension is worth looking at as well. Maybe it'll get a dedicated video in the future. I'm not entirely sure. And that's pretty much everything this can do. Now, if you want to install this, obviously GitHub CLI is a prerequisite. So make sure you have that installed. And once you have it installed, go and run GH extension install and then pass in the link to the repo and then go and run it. This extension may not be something you run every single day. But if you're already heavily working around a terminal and you're making use of GH already, it might be worth at least giving it a bit of a try. So that's going to be it for me then. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Is this something you would ever actually go and use? Do you make use of GitHub? Maybe you make use of GitLab or something else instead. I would love to know. And if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to only Barrow Pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays. And that's going to be it for me. So, I'm out.